started with our chess pawn, I just want to take a moment and look at the drawing dimensions so you can kind of lay out how we're going to go about creating the pawn. It's always kind of a good idea to get a sense of how the part looks and how you're going to approach the piece before you just start clicking and drawing. So looking at the dimension drawing, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called, um, we're going to profile it. So I'm going to pull up a diagram here. And the way this is going to work is we are actually going to draw, uh, starting here down at the bottom left-hand corner here. Okay? And we are just going to create an L looking shape, part of my wonky line here, but it's gonna go right up the middle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a profile of the pawn on one side, right? And it's gonna follow this path all the way down and connect here. Once we have that path made, we can then revolve it all around this middle central axis here. Okay, so that's the setup. Now, the dimensions that we're going to use, we're not going to use all the dimensions on the pawn. You can if you want to. I'm not saying you can't. Um, also, keep in mind that everybody's going to be at a little bit of a different skill level. Uh, I'm going to show you how to put all the dimensions in that I think are necessary. Uh, but if your numbers are different or you want to try a different way of, of doing it or you want to make your pawn look a little bit different, that is more than okay. Uh, again, this class is all about kind of experimenting and getting used to and familiar with Fusion 360. And we just want you guys to be familiar with the tools that, that are used and, and at your disposal. So let's get started. So ultimately, your chest, your chest pawn will look like this when we're done. All right, kind of cool. So to get started, up in the top left-hand corner, you're going to want to create a new drawing. Now, typically when you open Fusion 360, this is already there. Um, but it's going to be under here, under File, New Design. Okay. Now, when you do that, you want to create a new sketch. So to create a new sketch, under here, under Solid, has the green plus. Right. So we're going to click that. And just like an inventor, if you've used another 3D modeling app before, it gives you your X, Y, and Z axes with the planes. Okay. Uh, for this example, it does not matter which plane you choose. Right? Force of habit for me has always been the X, Y, so that's what I'm going to pick. Now, the layout for this is a little different than other 3D modeling things we've done before. Up at the top, you still have your basic sketch options, the lines and circles and things we're going to use today. Um, and then over here on the side, on the far right side, is one of the main tools that we're going to use is something called a construction line. Now, if you're using the web-based version, unfortunately, it doesn't have the construction option in there yet. We're hoping as time goes on, they start throwing some more of these things in there. Um, so for this example, if you guys are using the Chromebooks and, and you don't have that option, more than okay, just keep using a regular line and I'll let you know when to delete those lines later on. So looking at our chess pawn piece and the dimensions, I'm going to try to split my screen here a little bit. Just so we get an idea of what this pawn looks like. Okay, so if we notice down at the bottom of the pawn piece here, right, we need this outer dimension. And all these numbers, we're going to end up dividing in half, right? Because again, we're going to just take one side of the profile and revolve it all the way around. So if I look at the top view, it says that the diameter is 30. And that seems like kind of like a weird number, especially for a pawn. That's because all of these dimensions are in millimeters. <laughs> Again, not a unit we typically use, but sometimes you're going to come across a drawing where you don't use inches or you don't use something uh, in the English measuring system. So how do we adapt for that? Well, over here in, uh, in Fusion, under Document Settings, okay? now I have mine set up, because uh, I set this up a little bit ago, that the units default to inches. Fusion may have changed this because we are in the states that it defaults to inches. 
if it's not already in millimeters, you want to change it to millimeters. So in order to change this, what you want to do is you want to click change active units, the little icon next to it. And all of the opened windows that you get normally like an inventor, it would open up in a new box or an on shape. It would be over to the left hand side. Fusion changes it up again and it's throwing everything to the right. So all these pop up options and windows that you're going to use, it's going to be on your right hand side. So we're going to change the unit type to millimeters. Okay, now I'm going to give myself a little bit more screen space here so I can click this double arrowed and what that does is it just scoots that whole window over and allows me to work. I can always bring it back and click that arrow and it brings it back, which I will do later on. So for right now, and like I said, you guys can use these numbers. You cannot use the numbers, but it's up to you. Um, and I'm just going to take the dimensions from the pawn. So starting here, right, if I know that the base of this is a 30 diameter uh, base, I'm going to cut that number in half, right, which would be my radius. So I'm going to start by making it a 15, uh, and then the height of the pawn is 60, right, so 60 millimeters. So to create my L, my initial shape, I'm going to use the line tool. And the line tool is right here. It's the first one. I'm going to click it. It'll stay highlighted. It gives you a set of crosshairs. And I'm going to start right at the origin. Uh, if you guys have had me in class before, you know that's kind of my go-to. It's a good reference point. Um, it always allows you to give your piece and part kind of a, a centralized location. Um, so I'm going to scroll this out and as so I did one click and as you can see, I can kind of move this line anywhere I want to. Right. Um, so typically what I do, if I know the dimension ahead of time and I know that number is highlighted, I can edit it before I even do a second click. So I can type in 15 because I know it's going to be 15 millimeters and I can just hit enter. When I do that, it automatically makes my line 15. I don't have to go back and edit it. I'm going to do another line from here, and this will be going to the top of my pawn. Now here, I'm going to do a click. And now let's say, right, let's say I didn't dimension it, right? And I want to go back and dimension it later on. You're going to notice that you still have that line tool. You can just hit the escape key and it'll end it for you. But now I do need to dimension that line. The dimension tool is right here under sketch dimension. So we're going to click that, and then we can just click and highlight that line and drag it out. And when we do, again, it pulls it up just like a, a 3D modeling software would, and we can go in and we can edit and can change that to 60. All right, I'm going to use my scroll wheel on the mouse. Mac users are going to be a little different on how you guys zoom. Um, Ms. P, if you could put a text box on how that Mac users can do that, that would be great. Mr. K, I can do a little bit better than a text bubble on this one. So my PC users, go ahead and use that YouTube bar to scrub ahead and get past this. My Mac users, let's sit tight and talk about something on your computer called your trackpad. So if you have a USB mouse, you're welcome to scrub ahead as well, but that's not necessary. Now the trackpads on a Mac are really cool because they have a feature called gesturing. There's a lot of different gestures you can do on top of your trackpad to control the different visual elements of whatever window that you're in. In this case, we're going to be using the pinch to zoom element to be able to control whether we zoom in and out. It's exactly what it sounds like. Two fingers on top of your trackpad, pinching like this to zoom in, pinching like this to zoom out. It's going to control in and out on top of your screen. Now that works in both the browser version as well as the desktop version. So no matter what version of Fusion you're in, if you're on a Mac, you can pinch to zoom and you're good to go. Back to you, Mr. K. So right now I've got this baseline here and I've got a height line here. But how do I get all of these other curves? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create reference lines and reference points for every place that I want some kind of extrusion to occur. So if I look at this, there's a lot of dimensions. And like I said, I'm not going to use every dimension that's here. So I'm going to pick out some of the important ones. So I'm going to start at the top of the pond and working my way down. I'm just going to try to find if I use this image, it might be a little bit easier. Okay, 
So I'm going to change this to a blue. I'm going to use the highlighter. All right. So I know that I'm going to want a reference dot up at the top. All right. And then I go down and obviously there's a line here, right, that cuts off the, the circle part of the hub. That's going to be an important dot. All right. I probably want a dot here. Now, this middle area is a little wonky because it's got a lot of dimensions in here and it can get really finicky. Guys, just pick one uh, and to kind of get that concave body shape. I'm going to pick the one that has the, the 10 here. So it's going to be about here. Right? And notice I don't have an exact dimension for how high to go up on some of these. Again, that's okay. Pick and choose. And I'm going to have a point here. I'll do a point about here, one at the bottom, and one here. So I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm looking at about eight, maybe nine points that I'm going to put, going back to Fusion, that I'm going to put along this line. All right. So to get to your point tool, under the create option, if you click the double or the single arrow here, right, it gives you some more options. You want to click point. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a series of points along this line. All right. So to do that, okay, I'm just going to match up every highlighted piece that I made to approximately, roughly, we'll go back and dimension it about where that point would be. So I have one, let's say here, about the base of the circle, right? I'm going to put one about here, which is that first piece. This point is going to line up with that uh, right in the middle of that concave body I talked about. So one about there, and then we go down a little further, and this is all kind of crunched up near the bottom. So I've got one here, one here. And then maybe one here and one here, right? If I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that was my eighth at the top. So again, kind of get a general sense of those things. And now we're going to go back and dimension. All right. So to, to dimension everything, looking at the pawn sheet here, right? You guys can see kind of on the side, you've got. And we'll kind of highlight this area here. You've got this dimension. Right? We've got this dimension. Right? We've got this. And then we've got these smaller dimensions down here. Right? There's a two and dimension down here. All right. Again, and I'm going to kind of split my screen the best that I can here and guide you guys through how to do the dimensioning. Oh, sorry. Okay, so to dimension, you want to make sure that you have your dimension tool highlighted. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to select a point, and then we're going to want to select the next point. So if I look at this first piece, it's really the top of that hub to where that first line is. So on this side, right, if I'm looking at my drawing, it would be the 15.71 dimension. So I'm going to type that in. That's 15.71. And that's pretty close. The next one is that gap, which would be 3.26. So I'm just going to go through this whole thing. And you guys can pause the video and go and do what you need to do and come back um, or just kind of follow me. That's fine. Uh, but I'm just taking this step by step. Now for this one, right, the, the middle one is, see how this says 24.06? That right there is from this dot to this dot down here, right? This dot here, that was my reference point for that, uh, the smaller diameter. And it doesn't really give us a height for that. So we can kind of just give it, you know, whatever we want it to be. Uh, so I'm going to make this dimension the one that I know. Hey, I was actually pretty close. Look at that. 24.06. Right. And then I'm going to say from here to this dot, 
right, maybe I'll go down a little bit. Um, I'm going to say, let's make that, um, let's make that 16. Okay. And again, I just made up that number. That's not on the drawing. All right. And then continuing down, right, uh, I've got the base of this piece here. So I'm going to dimension from here to here. Uh, and I'm actually going to combine these two. So if you're looking on your pawn dimension, it has a two and then a one. I'm just going to put those together and I'm going to make it a three. I'm going to dimension from here to here. And that's going to be my 8.97. And I'm going to then dimension, looks like, it looks like I kind of have a situation where it put a dot over the other point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put another point in there. So I have one more place to reference from. So I'm going to dimension from here to here, and that's going to be two. And then from there to the bottom, that's going to be three. Right. And yes, it's kind of a hot mess. Uh, as far as dimensions go, but for right now, it's it's okay. We got our points where we need them to be. All right, so now in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the construction lines, profile it, and revolve it. Okay, guys, so for the second part of this video, what we're going to do is we're going to now create uh, what are called profile lines, and then a full profile. So going to the dimension drawing here on the right, what it's going to look like is for every point that we have. Right? So if I if my point was here, right, I'm going to create a dimension line that goes from here out to the edge. Right? I'm going to do the same thing at every point throughout. So I end up with this series of lines that are going to be coming out of here. Right? So for every point that's there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a profile. And I've lost my cursor. Um, so point at the top, right? And then here, across here, across the bottom. I apologize for them not being straight. Um, and then what we're going to do is basically at the end of this, we're going to create and connect all the dots. So you're going to create the curve and it, we're just going to follow this all the way up to the top. All right. So let's take a look at what that looks like in Fusion. All right. So in Fusion now, for those of you guys that have or are using the Chromebook version, the web version, this is where it's going to be maybe just a skosh different, uh, but really not uh, all that much more uh, complex. It's just going to be you're going to use a different tool. So for us, right, we're going to use the line tool. So everybody's using the line tool. And now if you have the software version in the sketch palette, so over here on the right hand side next to the double arrows, click the double arrows and you want to click construction. And what the construction option does is the lines that you draw are going to be called construction lines. For those of you that have taken IED, we've used it before. For those of you guys that are new to 3D modeling, construction lines are lines that are basically just reference lines. They're not used to make any shape. Uh, and actually they're really good for stuff like this where you just want to get to a certain point and be able to draw lines and dimension stuff, but without actually creating what are called object lines to get in the way. All right, so as long as that's selected, we can close that back up and you'll notice that it's still highlighted so it didn't go away. Okay. And I'm gonna hold off with the top bulb here for, uh, for a moment and I'm gonna start at the second dot. And you notice that the second dot, if I look at my dimensioned drawing, that the diameter here is 12, okay? Well, half of 12 would be six. So that's how far out I'm gonna put my line. So if I click that dot, 
right? And I make my line six millimeters long. Right? You're also gonna notice that it's dotted, right, or dashed. That means it's a construction line. And if at any point you guys are going through this and the dimensions are kind of getting in your way, uh, as long as, for the purposes of this assignment, as long as you're not going to move anything, uh, typically I would not recommend deleting the dimension. If you want to move it, you can definitely move it. Um, but if I delete this dimension, the line's still going to be there, and you can kind of see that whole profile. And as long as I don't do anything to mess up that line, you deleting that dimension uh, doesn't really do too much, at least for this example. So I'm going to do that the same way throughout the rest of the poem. So my second dot, I gotta make sure I have my line tool selected. And again, you're gonna notice that the construction bit is still highlighted. That'll stay highlighted until you go back and deselect it. If you guys are using the web app version, you're just gonna have a series of lines. Not a big deal. So that next piece, right? If I'm looking at my dimension drawing here, okay, um, how far over that is. Uh, it doesn't give you a clear uh, dimension there, but we know just based on the drawing that it's gonna be under 12. So again, this is a scenario where you can kind of guess, uh, and let's just say it's 11, so we're gonna make it 5.5. So it's a little bit underneath. If you wanted to make it five, you can make it five. And I'm gonna delete it just to get it out of the way. Again, I go back up to my line tool and this is the, uh, the middle piece. So that's is where the 10 is. Okay. So half of 10 is five. So I'm gonna type in five there. Pan down a little bit here. Okay. And now I've reached the base piece down here. And that dimension appears to be 16. Okay, so I'm gonna make this eight. Um, and then the next dimension down from that is 20. So this is gonna be 10. All right, and now we got this kind of big bubble shape situation here and notice that now this bubbles out to 28 but then it kind of comes back in here we didn't allocate a dot to push it out that far uh, that's okay uh, if you guys want to create that dot you can uh, I'm gonna skip it and I'm just gonna put the line down here on the bottom uh, and that line down at the bottom is 26. So also, this is kind of nice because it's getting you used to reading um, a, a dimensioned drawing. And now I know those of you guys that took IED, you look at these dimensions and you're like, well, the dimensions are on top of the drawing and it doesn't look like all that stuff. That's okay. Not every dimension drawing is the same. You got to be able to look at a drawing and interpret it and be able to follow the arrows and figure out what's uh, what the shape of what is. All right, but the second last dot here, that has a diameter of 26. So that's gonna give us a 13 radius. And then the last one we know is 15, uh, which is down here. So we're gonna make this 15. Right, and that'll be the end of that. So now we have this series of dots that we can connect at the end. All right. uh, so let's look at this hub, the arc. All right, so the easiest way to make the top piece of this pawn is actually to create a circle and then to trim it. So here you guys have a center diameter tool. Okay. And if we click it, the way the tool works is you're gonna click the center point of a circle and then you expand it out. The problem is right now, we don't have the center marked for this circle. So we need to create one. So I'm actually gonna go and create a point for this. So if you go to your point tool and I'm gonna drop a point here and I'm gonna dimension that point. 
this point will be the radius of our circle. So we know that the circle, if you look at the dimension drawing, is 18. So the radius would be 9. Now I can go into the circle tool, click it, and it's going to click the center. So that's my center point, and I'm just going to click and drag up until... All right, now, there's one thing I did here that's a little different, and we got to change it up a little bit, but that's okay, is you're going to notice that I made this circle a construction line. All right, so I'm going to click Escape, and we need to turn this back into a regular object line. Now, if you're doing the web version, it's already an object line, so you're good. If you guys have been following me and you made it a construction line, this is how to change it. So if you highlight it, and you go to the right-hand side where the double arrows are and uncheck construction, it turns it back into a solid shape. Okay. So now, obviously we don't want this whole thing, right? We just want this arc piece. So we're gonna use the trim tool. Now the trim tool, this is gonna be a little bit different depending on if you're using the software version or the web version. In the software version, Right? It's where the scissors are, and it says trim. If you're in the web version, if you guys look, it's in about the same spot. The icon's in about the same spot, and you're going to notice a line and a dotted line next to it separated by, it's not used by scissors, but it's used by a diagonal line. That's your trim. So we're going to trim. And all we're going to do is trim out the circles and select the sections we don't want to use. And just like that, trim is gone. Okay, so guys, to finish out the profile, what we're going to do is we're going to use the line tool and a three-point arc tool to get the rest of our shape. Okay. Now, you might notice that down here at the bottom, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. But down here, I use the line tool and I'll zoom in here for you. So I started and I went from here up to this point, and then I went from here over. Okay, now to finish off the rest of this, all right, what you guys are gonna need to do is you're gonna use a three point arc to finish off the rest of this. However, you guys need to create points, so the point tool again, on the other side of the line of all of your construction lines. So I'm going to put points on all of my construction lines. So you should notice that they are all black when you're done. All right. Now I can go into my three-point arc tool and connect everything. So when, again, when you use a three-point arc tool, you have to click the first spot, the second spot, and then it allows you to bubble it out as much or as little as you want. This is where you can be a little creative where we're not going to use any kind of dimensioning here. There are dimensions on the drawing if you want to use those, but I'm just going to kind of point and click with what makes stuff look good. All right, I'm going to pull this guy in a little bit, and this is where I'm actually going to use that uh, extended piece to kind of give it that body shape. And I'm going to do one more down here. And again, you can make this as bubbly or not bubbly as you would like. All right, and it should highlight when you're done. So when we're done, we're going to finish the sketch. Okay, and when we're the last piece of this now is we are going to do a revolve. So in the top left corner, this is our revolve button. Okay, and you can kind of see what it's going to do. So I'm going to click that. Again, my pop-up window comes up over here. It, everything, providing you guys have a closed loop, meaning that all of your lines and points are connected, it should highlight. If this is not fully highlighted, you missed a point or a dot or a connection somewhere. So go back in and check your work there. The profile is going to be uh, selected already for you. The axis itself, it says to select. We want that to be that middle line. And as soon as we do it, it's going to give us a 360 degrees, we click OK, and we can then rotate around, and we're done. 
Now, for those of you guys with the software, uh, the web version doesn't have this, but I kind of wanted to show you guys this anyway, is you guys have the option to change the material. So what you can do is make sure you select all the material. And if you right click, right, you can change the appearance. And if you guys scroll down here, there's a bunch of options that you can use. Um, you've got, you can make it different kinds of metals. You can paint it glossy, matte finishes. You've got some plastic wood options. We can turn these into, you know, a nice, uh, a nice mahogany piece if I wanted to. Uh, and what you do is you click and drag and you just put it over the section you wanted to change. All right, so I can change this to different wood styles and make it a walnut. It's a little dark for me. Um, personally, I like the stainless steel, so I'm gonna go back to that. Okay, but there you go. There is your chest point.